Welcome back to ADHD with me, Travis Mills. Today I got a special guest. Shane Smith is on the podcast. Yo. Uh, dude, we have to shout out Twitter for making this happen. Yeah, yeah, for real. We got to shout out you guys, the listeners, the fans. For uh, Someone made, made a tweet. Yeah. They said, hey, I'd love to see uh, Shane on Travis's podcast. That's the best. I like the tweet. Yeah. And you like the tweet. I did. <laughs> it was it was magic. And now we're here. Well, you know what's crazy? All right, so I wanted to I didn't want to tell you this until until we sat down, but uh I saw I was on Facebook like a year ago. Sure. And um something popped up like on my recommended, it got fed to me and it was this uh it was this comedy, this dry bar mm-hmm. comedy and it was your comedy special. Yeah. Uh what was it called? Uh, prison for wizards prison for wizards dude yeah. and i watched you tell these jokes about just having tattoos and it was so I, you were the first stand-up comic i found with face tattoos i think i'm still the the only one that i know of That's that ha- is this heavily tattooed even kind of yeah dude and I, I was just so drawn into it and um and your name is different on twitter you're you go by Shay dozer yeah yeah, yeah. which and then I, so i was confused at first because i'm like wait this is this is that dude. And I was like, oh shit. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I'm excited to have you on, man. You're really fucking funny. Oh, dude. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Of course. Uh, dude. So tell everyone, like, how, how the fuck did you get started, man? How does a kid with, you know, roses tattooed on his face and straight edge across his neck, like, you know, stand yeah. on stage and tell jokes? Are you uh, still edge? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, dude. Uh, almost 19 years now. Insane. Yeah, yeah. Doing it. Sobriety is the move for me, for sure. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. But, um... Uh, starting comedy, it was weird because I didn't, I started late. I didn't start comedy till I was 27 years old. So like, I just had like a, a, a weird life. Like when I was young, I was like a bad kid. You and got into I, a lot of trouble. Yeah. Yeah. And then I was, when I was a younger man, I was a bad young man. Yep, I did great. a lot of, cr- I was a professional criminal for a while. Really? Yeah, dude. I was like, not the best guy. And you, you grew up. Well, it's crazy because we were talking when you came here today and you're like, yo, I was born in Riverside. Yeah, well, I lived in Riverside, but I wasn't born there. But yeah, I, I lived in Riverside for most of my like from, you know, my, you know, a baby until I think 11, like 11 years old. That's insane. And then we moved to Utah, this tiny town in the middle of Utah uh, to kind of like get away from life. I think my stepdad was like into some trouble. In Riverside, it's really easy in, to, yeah, to yeah. get into trouble. That's man. what I hear now. Yeah, man. So um, we lived in uh, we lived in Utah. It's like this tiny, tiny town, and uh, but yeah, it, eventually um, I got into trouble, and then uh, my life. I was like, oh, I got to change my life around, and I like met this girl, and we started dating, and I had like all this structure, and then I was like, oh, now that I'm not like stealing stuff out of cars and robbing people for a living. I, I like, what do I do? Cause I didn't go to like school at all. So it was like, oh man, I, I want to like do something. I don't want to just be a guy who works a nine to five and like wastes away. And yeah. I felt like really unfulfilled. And I was like, oh, do I join the military? Like, do I, you know, this and that. And then um, one day there was like a comedy special and I've, I've always loved comedy, but it just seemed like it's just like when you're a kid, if if your parents don't like motivate you to do stuff, you're like, I could never play baseball. If someone Dude, doesn't tell you, sure. you can. So like I grew up with everyone being like, you're a loser, you're nobody, like whatever. And then that made me an insane person who thought I had to like beat people up to get respect <laughs> yeah. and that like having money was all I wanted to do. And then so by the time I was like doing this, I was like, I could never do comedy. Like, well, I can't be in Were show business. Funny? Yeah, I I mean that's what people tell me. I don't want to be the guy who says, "Yeah, I was always funny" because it hilarious. feels it feels stupid. But yeah, I I remember the first time because I was like a funny kid in school. Uh, I remember I was getting beat up by a bully. Okay, it's like this kid, like he had me, dude. He had like my shirt full on, like Disney bully style, and he was just wailing on my face. He was like in eighth grade, and I was in sixth grade, and I probably deserved it. I was saying some crazy <laughs> shit, you know. And he's just punched my. I remember his name with no. I remember why. His name was Richard Hare. Richard Hare, Dick Hare. Yep. Nice. Yep. And then you know I went in on it, and he was like not having that, dude. With a name <laughs> like Dick Hare. You have like one. Your parents are dickheads. Yeah, yeah. For naming yeah. you that, I'm straight up. Like you have to have some foresight for like the rest of your kid's life. You know. Yeah, yeah. Just like go with something else, Nick. Nick. Anything else, Nick Hair. Literally anything. Else. So we we I went to such a small school that like eighth grade and sixth grade were together. 
Okay. Because it's such a small town. So he did something in like a class and I was like, you're, you know, okay, dick hair. And he was like, after school, you're going to die. <laughs> And I was like, all right, like, cool. And then he found me after school and he's got me and I'm like in the snow and he's just like punching my face. And I was like, this sucks so bad, like getting punched in the face. And then um, he was like, you're so stupid. Stop talking and I'll stop hitting you. And he was like, what are you, dumb? And I was like, I'm not dumb. I'm smart. And I pulled out an Animorphs book. Do you remember Animorphs? I literally had an Animorphs book like in my coat. I was a huge nerd. And I was like, I'm not dumb. I read. And my friends watching me get beat up, were I just lit them up. They were laughing so hard as this dude just beating me. And I've just got my book in my hand, like just getting the crap. And I was just like, dude, worth it. That was your first bit. Yeah, I remember. I was just like, this is this is cool. Like, who cares about getting winning this fight was whatever. Getting all them the to window. laugh felt way better. But then I was a crazy person and I sunk that guy's boat. No, wait, for real? Yeah. You got dick hair back? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I guess I could legitimately get in trouble for this. But he had like a boat. <laughs> oh, my God. He was very proud of. And I was the type of. How long did this feud between you two last? Not long. After, Wait, so he honestly. had a boat in eighth grade? <laughs> well, he like, yeah, and like, because we live in a small town, so like fishing was like a big... Oh, shit. And he was so proud. Like his family probably saved up for this boat. <laughs> God, this is horrible, dude. I feel so bad laughing. I, I fucking, but this is good. I probably shouldn't say this. <laughs> so it's too late now. So I was like this evil kid. One of the reasons I was good at crime was because I never needed recognition like a lot of people like if you get someone back your sense of justice tells you they have to know it was you yeah and I, I don't have that it's not in me my thing is like oh if you're miserable hell oh, yeah. yeah yeah i win so um I, I was like dude this guy's the worst so i my parents like didn't pay attention to me or whatever so i just like got out of, i just left my trailer oh yeah i grew up in a trailer you know you knew and so i i left i snuck out i went i drug his i drug his boat into the water i put a bunch of heavy stuff in it and i like drilled holes into it and then i wheeled it out into the water and then i just swam back to shore and it sank and he never they were just like where'd the, where'd boat, the boat go, go? <laughs> nowhere and then i remember like um in the uh later they were like one day there was like clear water or whatever because no one was playing in that part of like this little lake and they were just like is that is that my, <laughs> my boat down there? And I was like, cool. I never said anything, dude. They were just like, who could have done this? Because it was so long. I waited, too. I was a, I was kind of a crazy person. <laughs> I mean, maybe I still am. I don't know. Would you, like, go back to the scene of the crime? The scene of the crime. Just think about See it. See if they dude. got a new boat. Dude, we went swimming there and stuff. Like, as a, you know, like, all the youths. Like, and I just remember swimming, like, yeah. I'm swimming over, over this the boat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get wrecked, dude. Just, like, Holy 20 feet down. fucking shit. Today. Today's podcast is also brought to you by a repeat sponsor. Thank you so much. It's brought to you by Talkspace. We all need someone to talk to, uh, a person who can sp support you through rough patches or even through everyday ups and downs of life. That's where Talkspace comes in. It's therapy for how we live today. It's mobile. It's available when you need it. And it's affordable. Life can be stressful between work, family, and everything that gets in between. It's not always easy to find time for yourself, but now you can with Talkspace. Uh, Talkspace online therapy makes taking care of your mental health more affordable and convenient than ever provide your preferences for therapy Talkspace will match with one of the 4,000 plus therapists the very same day you can send them unloaded text audio picture or video messages from anywhere at any time no matter what you're going through you're not alone join join more than 1 million people who feel happier with Talkspace it's convenient it's easy to use and best of all it's affordable Talkspace has more than 4000 licensed therapists who are experienced in addressing the challenges we all face to match with your perfect therapist for a fraction of the price for the fraction of the price of traditional therapy go to talkspace.com make sure to use the code ADHD to get your first week free and show your support for the show that's ADHD and Talkspace dot com today's episode is also brought to you by movement watches stop what you're doing look down at your wrist because our friends at movement watches have got exactly what you're missing movement has covered with tons of quality clean and all-around good-looking watches and accessories that we can actually afford and order right from your couch do your wrist and wallet a favor go check out their minimalist designs that you can have with no risk because they offer free shipping and returns with over 2 million watches sold worldwide movement has solidified themselves as one of the fastest growing watch brands 
brands out there. I heard Joe Rogan talk about it on his podcast. I went and checked uh, checked it out. You can pick a style or design that you personally like. Uh, you know, it's super easy to browse online. I got one of them right here. It comes in this nice little box. Uh, movement watches start at just 95 bucks. You're guaranteed to find something that you love and it's not going to break your bank. These guys are truly uh, an entrepreneur success story. I've had people like Gary Vaynerchuk on the podcast. I love stories like this. They understand living on a budget because they had to as well and that's why they wanted to make quality products that are accessible to everyone. They've sold over 2 million watches across more than 160 countries and their collections are always expanding. You can get 15% off today with free shipping and free returns by going to move movement.com slash ADHD. That's MVMT.com slash ADHD. See why movement keeps growing. Check out their collections. Go to movement.com slash ADHD. That's MVMT.com slash ADHD and join the movement. Oh man. Tell me about your first tattoo. Dude, my first tattoo ever? Oh, no. This is embarrassing. Look, if you're listening to this podcast, I highly suggest you go and switch over to watching it because if you don't know what Shane looks like. Yeah. Yeah, he, he's more tattooed than me, I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Maybe a little. I don't know what's going on on the rest of you, but. All filled up, buddy. You, are you? You yeah. got your chest filled up? Oh, yeah. Oh, it hurts. So bad. So my first tattoo is the, this, it says, live, love, burn, die. Do you know? Do you know what lyrics that is? Nope. It's from a Treyu. Oh, sick! Yes. Yeah, yeah. That that album came out, and I got tattooed like immediately. Yeah, uh, that was one of the first like. That was one of the first like heavy albums that I was listening to. Yeah, same. Say, I got into like punk rock. Like I was listening to a lot of like Dead Kennedys and like Ramones, mm -hmm. um, and then I got into like you know hardcore metal. Yeah, same, Screamo. exact same situation. And uh, I remember I went from, I got an Atreyu tattoo and then I heard Hatebreed and I was like, oh, Atreyu's not heavy. Exactly. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. oh no, there's heavier. And then I was like, Madball exists. Yep. And then I was Integrity? like, Integrity? Yeah, yeah. And then I was like, oh man, I like ruin. I like, well, how dumb am I? Because I was so into like, I wanted to be like the hardest of the hard. Now I, I looking back, I'm like, oh, cool tattoo. This yeah. is fun. Yeah. But yeah, I got it with a friend. We were like, oh, dude, we were so young too young and then i got like a whole sleeve in like a month <laughs> from a dude to the kitchen table like gun dude my first tattoo was done at a kitchen table i traded a sidekick for it <laughs> dude yes yeah and uh and the dude who tattooed me uh was in 24 crew no <laughs> yeah yeah oh i knew i knew some people yeah back in the dude. Day. that's crazy uh and it was just like you know he was in also in a hardcore band i don't remember what hardcore, hardcore band he was in um there were so many back then. there were so many back in the day but yeah uh and i got tattooed at andrew from winds of plague's house that's the kitchen that i was in dude. uh in rancho that's ranch so cucamonga crazy. i was just having a conversation about winds of plague yeah. and i was like oh that first album still bops pretty hard yes dude Man, just taking my my people listening right now are probably like, what the fuck is this? But you know, yeah. just taking a trip down memory lane, dude. Just doing it. I mean, there are people who know what Winds of Plague is for sure, and what hardcore is. Yes, you know, it's that music that you uh, fight the invisible ninjas. People too. To. Yeah, yeah, or people, <laughs> actual people. I just ninja. remember people just being dicks at shows when I was like fifty. Like, look, kids now, like they they're going to. I guess it's still. I guess now, like you'll go to like. Uh, I'm trying to think like a suicide boy show or like, you know, you would go to like a fucking, I don't know, oh, odd future show back in the day. Yeah. And like, you know, fools would just run up and punch people. But like, that's like all shows were when I was a kid. Yeah. I remember uh, people now are like, don't do that. And I'm like, Oh, I didn't know that there were other I used options. to get, dude, I used to get really bad anxiety every time I would pull into the parking lot in my friend's car to go to a show. Yeah. Cause I'd be like, Am I going to get my fucking jaw broken? I've got my, I low key got my jaw dislocated. Really? At the show. I got kicked in the face by a guy who turned out to be my barber years later. No and he way. still cuts my hair. That's so cool. Yeah. Dude, that's, again, just a <laughs> small scene, dude. <laughs> I like had, I was friends with so many sketchy, like, bi like biker dudes and like hardcore. Like, one of my, I've had a few friends that are just in prison forever now. We'll say, put yep. it that way. So like when I would go to shows, I had these dudes that had my back. And so I had this like false confidence. Like, of course I would just, if someone wants to beat you up, they'll beat you up before anyone can help. But I was like, dude, the guys who have my back will machete you in the parking lot. So like, I was like this little dude who just like did not care. So you're, you're running around Utah, you're going to shows, you're getting into trouble. Yes. And what makes you like want to like switch it all around? 
dude uh i just remember one day this is <laughs> um i all another story maybe but we'll just tell what? No. <laughs> so uh this dude long story short this dude hits me with a snowball outside of arby's it is like so specific yeah this, i hate when that happens this gnarly dude hits me with a snowball outside of arby's and i'm like fuck this guy it's on so i go to fight him and my friends are with me so we're fighting in arby's now okay it's like these it's just like this group of dudes we're fighting them full on like there's five it's like five on five like a, a whole brawl dude and i just remember i'm like beating this dude and he had like dreads so i had his dreads in my hand and i was just like he had nowhere to go it was over for him and i looked <laughs> over and my brother who was also a sketchy guy he hung out he hung out with me at the time he my little brother and he my little brother's a big dude he's so much bigger than me and he was boxing this guy and he was just he was winning so hard dude <laughs> this guy didn't have a chance in hell this poor guy's friend threw a snowball at the it did like a gang member <laughs> you know how how bad can you lose it was the worst thing that could have happened to these these like bro dudes and my brother is just like beating this dude to this gorilla fist and the dude is losing so hard and he's just he looks horrible and then there's this family at arby's and they're watching the fight and this mom like puts her hand over her son's eyes like a titty's gonna pop out or something like i was like what are you covered but i just remember thinking oh my brother's a like being a bad guy right now like he are we bullies right now and then at the time I was like, no, he hit me with a snowball. Fuck all of hit everyone he knows. He deserved. It. Yeah, but no, he didn't. I I could have been like, I could have confronted him and be like, it was so uncool to hit me with a snowball. Like, did you do that on purpose? And he probably would have been like, no, I'm so sorry. But instead, I just opened the door to Arby's and just blam, uh, uncool of me. I admit that now. But yeah, my brother had my back. Because if you're cool, like if we're friends now, mm -hmm. and if someone starts fighting you, I'm now also fighting. I feel really good about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. like that's, that. that's how it goes, right? Yeah. And I know people are like, that's uncool, one-on-one. -on -one. Nope. <laughs> I'm not going to let my friends lose a fight. No. Dude, if oh, that guy man. doesn't want to fight, well, if that guy doesn't want to get fight two-on-one, -on -one, he should have more friends. <laughs> he should start fights Be with more his friends. Be more popular, around. dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um... I would never let my friends get beat up. Fights are dangerous. So, uh, yeah, my brother had my back, and I just looked at my brother as his mom was like, no. And I was like, oh, my brother's kind of sketchy. And I was like, I'm kind of sketchy. And I was like, is it, are we doing this to each other? And I was like, no, we could be better. And it just, like, clicked all of a sudden. And so, like, the drive home from Arby's. Yeah. You're, like, licking your cuts. Dude, yeah. I Also, I remember about that fight. At the end of the fight, so you know how they have the ring the bell for good service? <laughs> One of my friends, like, drop kicked a dude's head into the bell. And I was just, like, being good service. And I just remember being, like, that was, I know it was bad. What we did was wrong. But I remember that specific moment. I was, like, that was pretty tight, though. I feel like this episode's going to get flat. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> for five for violence is that possible i don't know no oh no today's episode of the podcast is brought to you by the adhd merch store go get yourself a coffee mug a hoodie or some joggers fanjoy.co slash adhd i love that i'm just waiting for someone emailing me dude <laughs> I, i've told other stories where like i'm not gonna tell the story because i'm i was told i'm not allowed but i will say the premise of the story was i had a sword and there was a guy and i told that story Wait, once what? Yeah, I'm so sorry I can't go more into it because I was literally told by a lawyer like, dude, stop telling people this happened. <laughs> you sound like you live in Florida. Dude. I know. <laughs> you I sound, know. You deserve, you belong there. I have big Florida energy. <laughs> you really I, do. I went to Florida recently and I was like, oh, I like it here. That's not good. Um, you feel it, comfortable there? But the guy, the guy who is in that story... I thought he was going to be like, I'm going to sue you. Your life is over. But he reached out to me and was like, no hard feelings. I love you. I'm so glad your life is going well. My life is going well. Um, so crazy that our paths cross that way. And I was like, Whoa, cool. <laughs> but like people, you beat up people. And then later they're like, oh, Shane beat me up. That was pretty sweet. Also, but just so everyone knows, I don't, I'm not like a tough guy. I've been beat up so many times. If you're going to like live by the sword. I know. I feel like this podcast, we just started it. <laughs> we went from comedy to just beating people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been beat up so many times. So I'm so I'm, for every kid listening that is getting beat up right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to Arby's with a sword. Go to Arby's with a sword. <laughs> Maybe don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But buy merch. So I was a bad Fanjoy person. Fanjoy.co slash ADHD. Oh, there it is. It, do you sell swords? 
You know what? I'm going to now. It would be sick yeah. if you had like a with the hilt. Yep. Yo, know, as soon as they, the the mugs sell out, and as soon as the phone cases sell out, and the hoodies and the sweatsuits, I'm gonna order swords. So there we go. If you're not incentivized now, then I don't think you ever will be. <laughs> um, yeah. I, uh, so I thought I was a bad person. I genuinely was a bad. Were you person. religious or anything growing no. up? Okay. No. So I just I was like, ah, it sucks. We suck. And I was like, we should be better. And so then just like how getting bad is like a progressive thing where you're kind of like screw everybody else it's all about us like these people are out to get us as soon as you start to be better you're like it's builds so you're like oh i'm good here then i should be good there and then eventually you want to be more empathetic and so we like changed our lives overnight dude we moved out we like cut ties with a ton of people we knew we got real jobs we changed our lives like literally overnight it was crazy yeah and he was down to my brother's credit without him i wouldn't be here today so that's incredible man yeah dude so we just like one day we're just like oh we shouldn't be bad to people and it was it and just changed everything right there. I watched, uh, you know, from your special, and you talk about uh, how you got asked to go be like a camp counselor. Yes. Can you talk about that? Yeah, yeah, I can okay. talk about. I don't want to like ruin a bit. Or no, no. Like that. I mean, it's on the special, so it's like you know, go see the special if you want to see the bit. But basically, what happened was, uh, I had this sketchy friend named Anton at the time. He was a part of that group of sketchy dudes, and he was so much scarier and bigger and like his entire face is tattooed his lips said trust no bitch <laughs> <laughs> like it was a tattoo wait is he a skateboarder no okay no 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 i i know that other people have had that tattoo yeah, it was yeah. even in the movie crank damn yeah yes i yeah. love that movie yeah yeah it's a good movie so he had that tattoo like og like he thought he invented it. I mean, he did in his own mind. Did he get mad like, when he saw the movie? Yeah, he was like, "I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll kill that kill guy." Them. No, and he for real was like, "If I find him, I'll kill him." And I was like, "It's like Liam Neeson." Anton, don't stop killing people, dude. <laughs> and I, and he was serious. So um, and so he was so sketchy, dude. He was so sketchy. He would he did so many things that I can't ever say. But so um when we like stopped being bad people, when we got our lives together, I got a job working with disabled kids and um, he, we like kept him around. Like he, he was our best friend. He was a bad person, but he was also our friend in, I don't know if you've ever been friends with like horrible people. Yeah. Yeah. But they're bad to everyone else, but they're so good to you, ride or die to you. And there's a, a part of your brain that's like, don't hang out with them. They're bad. But the other part of your brain is like, he would do anything for you, die for you. So you have to be his friend. I've definitely helped. I try. I try so hard to help those people. Exactly, that, and that's kind of the where I was like. I at first I felt guilty, and then I was like, "No, stick around because maybe you'll help." And I don't know that I did, but um, I think he's got his life together now. But at the time, he was still sketchy. And then this dude I worked with, his name was Matt. He's like the Ned Flanders of people, right? He's like this dude, vanilla, vanilla dude. He's the kind of guy that instead of swearing, he would say cheese and crackers. Have you ever heard someone do that? Or like, he'd say the word schnikes. <laughs> like, instead of the F word, he'd be like, oh, schnikes. Like, he was so, so vanilla. And he was Mormon. And he wore, like, the underwear. The whole nine yards, dude. With the Mormon. They wear, like, special underwear. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, he's very religious. And, like, which was cool with me. But, like, I was just like, man, this guy, I can't believe he wants to be my friend. So, um, yeah, he was jazzed. He'd be like, you know, Shane, he says the S word sometimes. Like, he thought I was cool. He'd be bra- yeah, he'd be bragging. Like, dude, he he really would, like, bring me around. Like, he'd, he'd invite his friends to come visit him at work just to be like, and this is Shane. This is Shane right here. Shane, come say hi to these people. And, like... They would they would look at me like a zoo animal, man. He just loved that he was friends with me, dude. I was like a street cred for sure. So he comes up to me one day and he's like, I work with these kids on the weekend. Like I have a I volunteer at camp. We have a specific group of kids at camp that are like gang members. They're like bad kids going down the same path you went down, making all the same mistakes you made. Do you wanna like talk to these kids? And like give them your experience and how you changed it. So it's not worth even going down that road. And I was like, yeah, man, like definitely. And that's how you fix that. So it's like, yes, you're killing it. You're so smart. You're doing the right thing. I'm going to help you. I'm going to feel great about it. Let's do it. And he was like, can you bring anyone who'd help you? Like, because it, it, if it's just you, it's whatever. But like, it should be like, you know, do you have anyone? And I was like, in my mind, I was like, call Anton. And then I was like, no, don't. But then I, I, I don't know why I did it, but I did. Why well, did yeah. you say no, don't? Because it's Anton. <laughs> and he was still sketchy at the time. I was like, don't invite an actual gang member to tell kids not to be a gang member. 
And I did it anyway. Why did I do that? So I, I'm like, yeah, I know a guy. He's like, okay, cool. So I call Anton. Anton's like, oh, murder those kids. Like, those kids think they can hang? Like, I, I'm on it. It's like Scared Straight. Yeah, dude. That's literally what it was. And I was actually watching Scared Straight, like, taking it, like, okay, scream at them. Like, threaten to kill children. Okay, here we go. And, like, thinking, here's the thing about Scared Straight that makes it work. There are, the police are there. Yep. watching the inmates so there's like a buffer there's no buffer when we show up it's just me and this maniac with trust no bitch tattooed <laughs> on his face dude and so we show up and matt is like super not stoked on anton like i'm the maximum level he could ever go matt meets anton and anton has a gun tattooed on the side of his face and in his face says bitch on it and so matt's just like oh dude like he, you could just tell he's like, what is this guy? And then um, he's like, are you going to be okay alone with the kids? The counselor who normally works with them isn't here. It's just you guys. Are you going to be cool? And Anton's just like, we fucking got this dog. And Matt's just like, cheese and crackers. Like, this is crazy. He leaves. We're with the kids. We're screaming at the kids immediately. Like, dude, we walk through the door like, everybody round up. You think you're hard? hard. Like, you think you're hard? Like, dude, just going crazy on these kids. Like, it's so wild how aggressive. We're being too aggressive even for, act like, the worst kids. So we're screaming at them. At one point, um, a kid is like, not. we're doing making them do push-ups. And the kid's like, I'm not going to do push-ups anymore. And Anton's like, you're going to do push-ups or you're going to die. You know, and that kid's like, no, I'm not doing him. And he's like, push-ups or consequences. And the kid, oh. dude, I'll never forget. He's wearing a puka shell necklace, dude. I'll never forget how confident this kid was. He's like this little kid with like frosted tips and a puka shell necklace. And he's like, if you touch me, my parents will sue you. And it's, so Anton's choking that kid, right? Like for hard. And all the other kids are freaking out. And they're just like, Shane, do something. I'm like, what's why I can also get choked? Fuck that. So uh, he's choking the kid. They're going crazy. Um, and then now the kids are doing push-ups. And that kid is like, I can't believe you. Hard, the like, hardest yeah, yeah. he's ever done. And then I'm like, they're crying. Dude, there's a kid crying so hard that I was like, that counts as working out. Like, for real. That's it. He's burning done it. something, dude. Yeah. So I'm like, something's up. I leave Anton alone with the kids. I go to talk to Matt. I'm like, Matt, what's going on with these kids? Matt's like... Uh, I was like, tell me about how gangster these kids are. Like, what kind of trouble are they getting in? Like, tell me more so I can relate and, like, give them what they need to hear. And he's like, yeah, they're gang members. They're just, like, gang kids, dude, like you, going on the same path you went down towards, like, this criminal lifestyle, not listening to their parents, not paying attention in school. Some of these kids are looking at porn. And I was just like, what the fuck did you just say to me, Matt? Like, dude... Are you for real, right? Like, and then I realized we've made them. They're not gangsters. They're just like not. They're, they're just like normal kids. They're, they're not only not bad. They're normal. They're just bad Mormons. And then I was like, oh, no. I left them alone with Anton. Go back to the barn. Anton has every kid shirtless. They're, he's The kids have formed a circle in the middle of the barn. And then the two of the kids are fighting for like supremacy of the yard. Dude, prison style. All society has broken down in a matter of minutes. Lord of the Flood. Yeah, dude. And I'm screaming and I'm just like, no, no. And I'm like, every kid get over there. And I explained to Anton and Anton's like, oh, we're going to prison. I was like, yeah, no, yeah, you choked him. You choked one of the, the kids. That said he was going to sue you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was just like, we're, it's over for us. And then Anton's like, well, we have one option. And he lines all the kids up and he's just like, you guys are reformed. And if you tell anyone about this, we'll kill all of you. And every kid was like, that's the deal. We take that deal. And then uh, they left and like a month went by and Matt didn't say anything and there were no cops. And then a while and it's been years and not one kid snitched on me. Were you invited back? So we were not invited back. We were not because it was like a one time deal. And apparently the kids, you, they didn't need you anymore. No, dude, it worked. <laughs> Because I remember, like, Matt was like, thank you so much at the end of the night. And I was like, okay, cool. And then I saw him at work the next day. And I kind of wanted to be like, how are the kids? But I was so nervous to bring it up. But he was like, dude, 
man, just so you know, you did a really good thing and like everything's working out. And I was just like, cool, cool, cool. Like, what is he like alluding Wait. to me going to prison? But no, dude, those kids never said anything. And I've been telling that joke on the road and it's on my special. And not one of those kids has reached out to me. Not one. So I'm just like, dude, are they so like, how old would they be now? They, they would all be around like 20. 324 right now your your demo dude dude i know your fucking demo that's what i'm saying so i'm just like dude the fact that they don't even reach out is so they might be in my instagram dm somewhere but dude not one kid has been like yo you <laughs> choked me <laughs> like <laughs> so i'm just like dude these kids are hard. and it changed like, my life they learned a lot man they're never gonna snitch has this whole uh has this whole thing been weird adjusting to like you know having fans and and people that they come out to see you yes yeah, yeah, it's been crazy. What's been the weirdest thing? <sighs> Dude, or what's been the hardest thing? That I'm, I the hardest thing? That. I think that, um, like, I don't know. Probably, it, well, I was in a relationship when I got popular, and it, like, really stressed my relationship out because girls were just, like, coming at me in my DMs and, like, in on Twitter and stuff. Like, people would just straight up be like, I want to bang you, like, let's date and like then i had like porn stars and like instagram models and actresses try to talk to me and like m my girlfriend at the time who was so sweet but she's just like my girlfriend from utah you know she's not famous so she was like it sucked dude and it, like to her credit she handled it pretty well but it was like rough yeah that was probably the wor the like hardest part and then I'm awkward. So like then when people are coming up to me to take photos, I'm like trying to be cool, but I feel so lame every time. So that was it, dude. What about you? What is it tough for you out there? I don't know. No, I I don't know. I like people. So if someone comes and says hi, like I'm not saying you don't. Uh when someone comes and says hi, I'm just like, yo, man, what's up? The thing that I hate is uh not hate, but I guess is when people like video you from far away. Yeah, I don't like that. I I'll be on like the train and someone will be taking photos and I'm like, ask, dude. I'm because I'm like you, you say hi. If they talk to me in person, it actually makes my day. Yeah, me when too. someone's like, I love your comedy. Like sometimes people yell at me from a car and I'm like, oh, it ruled. <laughs> Do you feel like people are double? Like, are they more scared to come up and like ask for a picture or say that they like your shit because of your tattoos? Um, or you think once they're a fan, they're just like, oh, you're cool. I don't know. I think they just think they'll be like, you're cool, but. I have a lot of people will DM me and be like, I saw you in New York and I didn't say anything because I was so nervous. And I'm like, oh, then we'll say hi next time. Because like, I'm cool with it. But at first it was weird. Well, you're touring right now too, right? Like you go yeah. around and like you do comedy shows. Like, because I, I just got back from like Missouri and like, uh, where else was I? I was oh, in I'm Illinois. Yeah. How fucking weird do like the hotel people look at you and oh. how like... <laughs> Dude, when you're in the Midwest, it's a new challenge like every day. I'm a full alien. Dude. Yeah. Dude, here's the thing that happens to me before I was popular. And then since just because of the way I look is I'll order an Uber or a Lyft and it'll be late at night and everyone's drunk and they think that I'm like a drunk guy ordering a Lyft and they pull up and they're like, are you Shane? And I'm like, yeah, I'm Shane. And they take a look at me and they roll the window up and they just drive away because they're like, nope, not that guy. Not that one. Not having him in the car by himself like dude it happens to me all the time so that sucks yeah that's that's fun yeah i feel like i people either are super intrigued or just hate yeah dude there's no middle ground you're either a lady who's touching my face at the gas station like oh, i love your tattoos yeah, yeah yeah or you're like just a dude who's like trying to wrangle your kids away from me shooting me dirty looks and stuff well you might choke them yeah 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 yeah. yeah, I'll get in there, dude. You, you, you never know. Dude, those kids aren't looking at porn, are they? Just, I'll <laughs> come in there, dude. I'll just choke them. So you have one special out right now. Mm -hmm. um, are you working on another one? What's like? Your pro what's your process like? Dude, um, well, I tell a lot of stories. And so... Uh, You're really good at it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, my next album, I have two albums I'm working on. One is clean. It's like all comedy that like anyone could listen to at work or whatever. And the other one is like filthy, filthy. Okay. It's like the stuff that no one that you like, it's, you know, listen to it in your headphones because if anyone else hears it, they're going to be like, what are you doing? So it's like sex stories and weird stuff. And I'm working on both of them. And they're both like mostly stories, a few observations, but like it's mostly, it's mostly just stories. Yeah. So. And how did you develop like, like your style? Like, you know, 
like who are the comics that you grew up watching or like the comics that you love? Oh, dude. So uh, when I was a kid, I wanted like I wanted to be Dave Chappelle. Dude, I think I've talked about this on the podcast before, but Chappelle shows like single handedly, you know, one of my favorite shows yeah. ever. Yeah. So I saw Chappelle and I was like, this is the guy. And then I remember I saw Kevin Hart and I was like, oh, this guy tells stories. I love like their styles. So Dave Chappelle, Kevin Hart. And then um, I saw that. Uh, do you know who Mike Birbiglia is? I've heard of I've yeah. heard of Mike. Yeah, he's a storyteller and he's kind of niche. But I was like, those three specifically kind of inspired me because they th- their styles were things I wanted. Mike Birbiglia is so far away from the other two, but he tells stories in such a way. And so, like, I'm a weird amalgamation of my interest in them. But over time, you develop your own style, you know. And so it's just like taking time. Uh, Honestly, it's just getting comfortable on stage and then being conversational. Because mm. my style's like, there's no act. I'm the same always. Yeah, on and off. Yeah, yeah, and I know comics who have like a character and I'm like, ooh, that looks so exhausting. Because you have to be the character on the podcast. Then you have to be the character on TV and you have to be the character on stage. And like, when do you get to not be the character and when do you be like, it's too much. Be yourself, kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm just- That's what Shane's telling you. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just like, it was easy to just be myself and then say whatever pops my mind and, uh, you know, gets me in trouble. Probably- (laughs) <laughs> probably after this well do no you remind like I, I i feel you because i feel like i've lived like t- you know 10 lives yeah so i always have a ton of shit to talk about and like you know I, I, i'm a story guy like when i'm hanging around people and i i can i like having conversations and it's yeah. like you know this verbal exchange it's same like, i love it dude i love people's stories i love people who've done a lot you know what cracks me up is i'll tell people stories and they'll be like oh, it's, oh so you've just done everything and it's like, how have you done nothing? <laughs> what do you do? What do you do that you're not out like living your life? It's so crazy. Like, I think a big thing too is traveling, man. Like when you get out and you, you're you able to like see places, even if they're not amazing, like you just see like, you know, yeah, some shithole town. It, it just changes your perspective on shit. Yeah. Also, I think that especially if you're like a guy who has a lot of stories or maybe someone like us, we're like saying yes to things a lot. So oh, it's, yeah, dude, someone's it's like all about saying yes. So someone's like, yeah, I'm going to go to this small town and a normal person would be like, oh, that sounds terrible. I'm going to stay home and watch Netflix because that's I know I'll enjoy that. And I'm kind of like, what could happen in that town? Like, or someone's like, I'm the kind of person who they're like, we're going to break into a water park. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm also going to do that. Like 100 percent. Like I'm always just trying to like do stuff. So uh, I say yes to a lot of things so that people are like, why would you say yes yeah, to that? What could go wrong? Yeah, dude. I feel like, yeah, I, I definitely did a lot of that uh, when I was, I feel like weirdly enough, that comes with hardcore, like hardcore kids yeah. would always be like trying to break into Disneyland growing up. Yep. Um, all my straight edge friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Percent. Always up to like weird punk rock shenanigans. Yes. Dude. But, and, and like these kids, just like great kids, they would just be doing just like weird white people shit yeah dude we used to play um we used to drive to the city and well we called it the city but it was like this tiny town and we would play cops and robbers where two people would be in the car and they had a spotlight because it's like a we just had a spotlight i don't even ask okay. and so and then the everyone else would run around town at night and then you would try to find them dude but like anything goes so we, you would just be like you would see them and you need to capture them so you're just like driving through people's lawns and you're like jumping you're just trying to go anywhere to get away and you had like a goal where you had to you had to collect like flags or something and we would play that that game all the time dude and it would get out of hand like once i just went into a taco bell and i was trapped and i was just like i'm going into the kitchen looks like dude and i just ran through their kitchen to get out like do we would just do anything it took to win the game and that's kind of the point of the game is to just like what won't you do to win and i would dude i'll go anywhere i'll do anything i didn't even care that's crazy, man. Yeah, yeah. Are you are you like that with comedy as well? Like you're down to like go to like these fucking crazy yeah. places and do sets? Yeah. So um, for the first year I made a living doing comedy, I did these things called triple runs, which are these super sketchy, weird shows in like Idaho, Montana, Wyoming. And they pay like $300. Okay. And it takes like 
dude, you like risk your life driving in the winter to get to them. And they're these tiny towns, these tiny bars. They have like 20 people at them. They're horrific. And like you, they stay in murder hotels. Sometimes you have to camp like, dude, it was wild. And I did that for a year. I said no. I didn't say no to a single show. That's incredible. They'd be like, dude, you want to go to the show in Idaho where like it's like well known to be the worst room in the country? And I was like, yeah. I don't even care, dude. Let's do it. Well, that must have built like your chops, though. Crazy, right? Yeah, yeah. You do a lot of like, because you you learn how to not bomb in those places, and it's a different muscle, because it's all about like talking to those people, and like the storytelling style you need to keep them engaged, because they'll heckle you. They don't care. Yeah, how do you deal with hecklers? Um, hecklers in comedy clubs is easy. You just see them and then you you shut them down. And make fun of them? Yeah, or whatever. It's A lot of the times I don't even make fun of them. I'm just like, what are you up to? I was going to ask, yelling? do people heckle you with the face tattoos? You know, I don't get heckled a lot. Yeah, I wonder why, dude. I know. I have a lot of friends who get heckled and I'm like, what are you doing that they're heckling you? I really don't get heckled like ever. And I used to when I did those crappy rooms, but even then I didn't deal with it as much as my other friends. I've never like, I've only been in one fight because of comedy. So I've, I'm Yo, like, I've had, I've people had people don't come up to me. I've had people throw beer cans at me while I played shows. Nice. I've had just crazy, just crazy shit. Well, when I, I was in a hardcore band and we, we had stuff like that. Yeah. Like people throwing glasses at you. Yeah. Dude, I've like just thrown your guitar into the crowd and just dove in like <laughs> this guy's going to get it. Um, <laughs> Oh man, to be nineteen. To be nineteen. <laughs> oh man. Uh, I think you know wh- I, what I was gonna say is like everyone kind of you know all these SoundCloud rappers stole your look, man. Did I always say I made the joke that I was a SoundCloud comedian once, and like I put that in my bio. I was like, that's so fun. I love that. That's great. SoundCloud that comic, is great. dude. Yeah, dude. I. How do you feel? You know, I don't look. I don't want to like age us, you know, because like when I was fucking 15, I was going out to get like my whole body tattooed. When I was 18, yeah. I was getting my neck tattooed. Exactly. Um, Right there with you. But now I'm just some, I'm just like, for me, I'm 30 now, right? Yeah, yeah. And so I'm like, dude, wait till you're 28. Oh, dude. Yeah, I tell people all the time. <laughs> the, the worst is people will come up to me and they'll be like, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, they use, and by the way, they don't even say that they know me from comedy. They're just like, here's what I'm going to do, Shane. I'm going to get this spider tattooed on my neck. What do you think of that? And when you have tattoos, people people just come up and tell you what they want tattooed. It's like, yo, I'm not a tattoo artist, bro. I just have them. I know. Dude, but they're like, (laughs) how sick is the spider on my neck going to be? And they they are always disappointed when I'm like, dog, that's the worst idea. What are you doing? Don't get a spider on your neck. You don't even have tattoos on your arms. Get one tattoo on your arm before you go to your neck at least. Oh, it's crazy. It's a... it's insane. I just, I can't wait. I can't, I just can't wait to see how this, how this ages, you know, I want to see how yeah. this shit ages. I think it's on the down now. Yeah. I think like people make fun of SoundCloud rappers so much and it's such a thing that now people are like, oh, don't like machine gun, dude, face tattoos are such a bad idea. Machine gun Kelly doesn't have one. Think Very about, true. think about that. <laughs> like, so I think it's like on the down. You know, because back in the day, like, is when Gucci Mane like got his face, like, oh my god, dude, that then you had to have a face tattoo for your street cred. I remember when rappers started getting face tattoos, I was actually kind of stoked because I had a face tattoo in like 2006 or some shit, dude. Not good. But let me tell you, in 2006, nobody had their face tattooed. I was a freak, dude. Okay, so I was 17, so that was like as I was doing my sleeve. And then, yeah, yeah, no, dude, I had two and, inch. I, by the way, I also had two inch fucking ears. Straight up also had two inch ears. Yeah, did dude. you have surgery? I had a surgery on one. I have a kitty butthole on the other one. Oh, it's really? just like a tiny little hole. Why didn't you fix like the other one? Because I was broke. Okay. Yeah, dude, I was like, it was at the time I was like a sketchy guy and I got the one fixed and I was like, whatever, this is fine. Girls will be fine with it. <laughs> because I got my head kicked in half, dude. Like my. So you're, you, uh, you got a rip. You're I was ripped. a splitty guy. I got hit and my left one ripped. Yeah. So there you go. My right one ripped and I was like, oh, dude. And I was like a dangly, dangly bopper guy for so long. And I, and I used to say like, oh, no, it's how I know girls are cool. 
if they if they like me even though i have a gross ear and then after i got it fixed i was like what bullshit that was yeah, i just you, didn't want to feel self-conscious about how gross i was you were making up any fucking thing. any excuse oh yeah dude we've lived similar but different lives yeah it's so you know? crazy so similar but so, so like, different yeah there's like a venn diagram and we're like <laughs> we're like yeah they're... right there right there just hi as we pass each other <laughs> That's so crazy. Um, and then you have a podcast, yeah? Yeah, it's called Freaky Geeks. Freaky Geeks. Yeah, freaky. Every and episode is flagged. <laughs> oh, for real? Yeah, it's not. Yeah, we say like some wild. We just say whatever. You watch like anime porn and shit. Hentai. We straight up have watched an anime porn and reviewed it live. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is, uh, yeah. That's that so is. funny that you said that. We've literally done that. It was Ghostbusters. <laughs> it was rough. Okay, <laughs> dude. I don't know what they added a fifth Ghostbuster. It. Let me just say, it didn't go well for that Ghostbuster, dude. Straight, not good. So, <laughs> oh my god, what do you like doing the most? Like, what what is like cr like creatively for you? Is it is, oh, it, stand, is it stand up? up? I love stand up. I will like. Um, I'm not a rich person, but like, if someone was like, you could barely get by, but you'll be a stand up forever, I'd be like, yeah. Yeah, I'll do that. I remember when I was like the most broke. I had just gotten divorced. I had no money. Wait, what? Yeah, I was married once. You, okay, okay. Dude, I go hard. <laughs> so Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, yeah, dude. I married this girl. How old were you when you got married? 28. Okay. So I married this girl. Anyway, we got divorced kind of because of comedy and some other stuff, but whatever. I'm divorced. I have nothing. I literally owned two towels in my clothes and my computer. It, that was it, dude. I, my brother let me move into his place, and my brother had some furniture, and I was destitute. I, I, this is true. I lost forty pounds because I like wasn't eating, and I was kind of chubby, and I just lost all this weight. I was doing comedy, and I was making no money. And I remember thinking, if I can make ten thousand dollars a year doing comedy, I'll just do comedy. I don't care. I don't care. That's all I need. I'll just barely make it. I'll buy a video game once a month. Whatever. It'll be great. And that was like my goal I set for myself. And of course, I've exceeded that by a lot, but that's where I'm at mentally, dude. I just want to do comedy and have a good time and laugh with people. Well, you're fucking doing it, man. Dude, thank you. Yeah, I've come rags to riches for real. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Do you do you like doing, like the stand-up scene in New York, how different from it is, is it, you know, from LA? Uh, very different. But I, I'm maybe not the best judge of character for LA, but all the LA shows I've done that haven't been at the comedy store, have, or like, because I do a lot, I've done a bunch of clubs here in LA, but the non-club shows in LA have been like not the best. Like the crowds kind of are like sensitive and weird. Um, the... Audiences in New York are all cool, but Brooklyn is similar to LA where they're like really sensitive. Like I have a story where, um, and I don't want to give too much away, but my brother sets a man on fire. We'll just say that. And uh, audiences all over the country <laughs> lose it, dude. They love this story. It's one of my favorite stories I tell. I love the story. Audiences in like Brooklyn and LA, when they hear it, they're like, well, is that guy okay? Like, no, fuck that guy. This is funny. Like, he's fine. Let's keep going. Like, they're not into it. So, holy shit. Yeah, man. That's, uh, I almost got arrested in Florida for cussing on stage. The cops came up to, to the, to the bus before I played and they're like, if you curse, uh, we're going to arrest you. How's that possible? So what I did is I went on stage and I told all my fans to curse. Dude, that's a baller move. On the count of three. <laughs> that's so good. Yeah. And, uh, and I like counted down this like chant. When I was very young, I did a show and we had people screaming, fuck the police. And they arrested us for inciting a riot. That's cool. Yeah. That's fucking awesome. See, I don't know if I would do that now. I don't know if I have that much pent up rage and uh and anger built up in me now. Uh, here's like the life is good. I'm happy. Here's the thing. At the time, it sounds like I was being like badass, but almost all of the like crazy stuff I've ever done has only been because I thought it was funny. Like oh, maybe damn, okay. my friends were punk rock and they were like, yeah, the police. I've never really been against the police. They Have just you, do their job. I feel like, are you an, like, like you want to push the envelope as far as you possibly can? I mean, sometimes. Okay, that's how I am. I mean, most. Okay, yeah. yeah. Let's be real. I do. I because I have my face. Yeah, clearly. You have your fucking but face I, tattoo. I just remember being the one who yelled like, "Fuck the police!" And I was laughing. Like I thought. I think maybe how funny I thought it was made it worse. 
for sure. Because I'm like maniacally laughing, like, dude, play the music, play the music. Like the police are like going through the crowd to come get us. It was in a small town too. Shouldn't have done that. Yeah, no. <laughs> Shouldn't have done that. And then also they let us go and then we immediately got the cops called us in again because we got banned from Taco Bell. You're banned from Taco Bell. Taco Bell in one town in Utah. I'm banned from Taco Bell forever because we used to do this thing where we would be like, we were here earlier and we ordered and you put tomatoes in our food when we said no tomatoes, but both of us are allergic to tomatoes and we work construction. We worked all day. We didn't get to eat our Taco Bell. I'm so sorry, but can you please give us the food? And then since it's so long, since when you ordered, they can't find the order. So they're like, yeah, we're so sorry. We'll order nine Crunchwrap Supremes coming right up. No tomato. So this scam worked all the time. I'm very young. By the way, I don't think this is cool. Don't scam people. But um, I'm, now as a grown man, I'm like, if you have that problem, message me. I'll Venmo you money for Crunchwrap Supremes. If you're that hard up that you're going to steal from Taco Bell. But so we were doing this. We had no money. Like, Taco Bell just dropped out of sponsoring my I, podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they here's what happened though the dude the dude's like pull right up pull right up we pull up and we're like dude uh worked again every time hell yeah <laughs> we pull up the dude the manager comes out and stands in front of our car and then the guy at the drive through we we're like what is this guy standing in front of our car like a creep for and then the guy at the window was like uh they recalled all the tomatoes in utah there's not a tomato in the state <laughs> you guys had no tomatoes today you were you're trying to rob us and they called the police and then the police were like dude we're not going to arrest you guys again you're banned from taco bell never come back and they were like get out of our town and we were just like, all right, dude. And we left. You need to bring a headshot back to that Taco <laughs> Bell. I know. I want to sign it. <laughs> I should go back there and be like, this is what's <laughs> up. You need to buy like 90 Crunchwrap Supremes and yeah. just don't even eat them. Just be like, just run it up. Dude, Here's the debit card. I feel like I look so like such a bad person now. I want everyone to know for like th th how long? For a long time, like eight years, I've been a v an upstanding citizen of these United that States. That makes up for an hour of you telling yeah, dude. awful stories. Thank you. Yourself. I work with, I've worked with <laughs> disabled kids. I still volunteer my time. I did a charity show for cancer last night. Um, I don't do weird stuff. I'm very good. <laughs> I tip very well. Um, yeah. Oh, I hate people who don't tip, man. It sucks. I fucking hate people who don't tip. I used to know this weird guy who would order milk with his food, and he'd say, with my food. I want milk with... Firstly, don't drink milk. You're a creep. But that's secondly... A, that's a little weird. Yeah. That's but a he, lot weird. He ordered his milk with his food, and if they brought it before, not with, he would not tip them. And I'd be like, I can't eat with you, because I have to tip if you don't tip, dude. So now I'm tipping for me and you? No. And then later, I like, as I get older, I'm the kind of person who's like, we're not friends anymore. You're weird, and I don't like that you do that. That's rude, and you're a creep, and you drink milk. Go away. <laughs> well, I feel like I'm friends with a lot of, like, my best friend, Davis. I've been best friends with him since I was 14. We grew up together. He's a little bit older than me. Uh, if I had met him last year, we probably would not be best friends yep you I know have, what i mean i have a friend like i have a couple friends like that yeah all, all of i think all of my friends i yeah yeah isn't that weird how adult life does that definitely yeah it's just like yeah I, but but it's it's nostalgic when you you know like yeah. hang out and it's like oh fuck this I, is why I, I also kind of love that we're like two different people yeah. now like i have friends who are like hippie hippies and like they were never into like that crazy path I went down, but we always stayed friends. And then we were here in adult life and it's like, we would never hang out. We have almost nothing in common, but we love each other's company. And it's kind of like weird to hang out. People are like, what are these two? What's this like really Mormon guy doing with this face tattoo guy? But I love hanging out with him, man. That's awesome, cool. man. Um, dude, we just did almost an hour. Oh, nice. Uh, anything you want to plug? Anything I want to plug? Oh, I forgot I was going to tell that one story. Which? Oh yeah. Oh, we could. How long is wait, the? You, I could get into it. You could. You could do it. I could do it. Oh shit! I'll okay. do this one. Okay, so wait. You, yeah, do it. I'll do oh. it. So this is the 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 football one. <laughs> oh. Or do you want me to tell no, the other? No, one? no, no. Tell me. I'll okay. do either one. So full disclaimer, guys. This is only for the true for you know the real ones get the story because you listen to the end. But uh, before we the mic started rolling on this podcast, <laughs> Shane was uh, we we're we we're bonding and he was telling a fucking crazy story. I was like, you have to wait. You have to tell it on the pod. And yeah. uh, I, 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 that's all I'm gonna say. Okay, so. 
Um, the story starts, I'm a very young man, I'm 19. I grew up in a small town, I was an ugly duckling. I didn't hook, I, I'm very sexually inexperienced. So I'm making out with this girl at her house. I snuck into her house, she's 18 and she lived with her parents still. I'm 19, we're making out, everything's going great. I'm like, this is amazing. Um, my clothes come off first, I don't know why. How does that happen? It doesn't matter. I'm naked. She's still wearing like her underwear and her shirt. And she's like, we're, we're getting ready to go. And I'm like, I cannot believe I'm in this situation. This rules. She's so pretty. I can't believe this. And then she's like, one sec, I got to go to the bathroom. And I'm like, yeah, that seems normal. She goes to the bathroom. Also, what are girls doing in the bathroom before sex? I have no fucking idea. They're just like hyping that they're like, yeah, like dicks are weird, but let's get into it. Like, <laughs> no. Anyway, so she's in there and I'm <laughs> sitting naked on the bed like, oh, I'm so excited for excited for sex. Here we go. And I'm so stoked. And I'm just sitting there like, dur, dur, dur. and then I realized, dude, sitting here naked with a boner is so dorky and i was like dude maybe stand up and i stand up and i'm like this is weird and i sit back down and i'm like no 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 stand and i'm standing and i'm just like all the angles are wrong like should i i didn't know what to do and i'm so awkward and i'm like should you lay and i'm like that's too weird and then i look down at the bed and where i was sitting and getting up and sitting back down there is a streak mark Dude, I have a hairy butt, full disclosure. It's not that I'm not wiping. <laughs> it's just that, like, dude, and I, I don't know what happened. I have no excuse, man. I'm gross. I'm 19. What can I say to you guys? I own a bidet now. I've, I've since corrected. <laughs> You've invested. I've invested in my butt future. But currently, there's a streak mark on this chick's white sheets, like Egyptian cotton white sheets. And I'm like, oh, no. So do I cover it and do it anyway? Do I tell her, like... Hey, this is the, these are them breaks. Ugh. These them break like or do I do I like take her sheet? Like she'll know if I steal her sheet. It's the bottom cover too. So I'm just like, dude, I'm locked. The fitted sheet. Yeah, dude, I'm locked in. I've pooped the fitted sheet. I've just Jackson Pollocked her bed, dude. It's so rough. And I'm just like, what in the world? And uh, I did the only thing anyone could do in that situation. I throw my underwear, gathered my stuff up because I could hear her like using the sink. And I Batmaned out the window. Like the worst, most grossest version of Batman, dude. Just poopy butt Batman out the window. I remember landing in the grass and it was like wet from being <laughs> watered. And I was like, I don't, I don't care. It's so cold. And I was just like getting my pants on. And I ran and I deleted her number. And she never texted me, by the way. And so I was like, wow, just imagine me and that girl, by the way. And you're like, this guy's going to hook up with me. Cool. You know what I was going to say is what if she was shitting? Maybe. <laughs> maybe she thought, maybe she thinks she did it. And she, and then I saw it and then she's like, oh no. Or she's like, this guy came into my room, pooped my bed and then left. <laughs> is he going to do me like that? And so, <laughs> dude, even worse, maybe she was like, he ghosted me. I'm ugly. And she felt so bad. I hope this isn't the case. I feel so bad. And then she sleeps and then she wakes up and she's like, what? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> and so, um, what if she thinks she shit her own bed? Maybe. If she's like, did I fall asleep with a Kit Kat in bed? What happened? So, if she thinks she shit her own bed, I've never thought of that. Oh, no. So, anyway. <laughs> This is why. Fast forward many, many years. I, lit I seriously think like 11, 12 years. It has been a long time, even longer. Yeah, 11 or 12 years. Um, I'm in that same town. It's a very small town in Utah. I won't say the name, but it's a very small town. It's got not a very big population. And one of my best friends lives there now. Okay. So I come back to town. He's like, I can't hang out tonight. I have a pro football game. And I was like, not a problem. I'll just play in the game with you. And he's like, what? And I was like, yeah, dude, whatever. And he's like, Shane, you're not, you're not like an athlete. You didn't even go to school. You've never played football. And I was like, I played in eighth grade. It's cool. And he's like, no, it's this semi pro football. Like, Former pro players and college players play. You're going to die. And I was like, I'm not going to die. I'll play a different, I'll play a position in the back. It's going to be fine. And he's like, all right, like, let's get into it then. And so he's like, what university did you play for? What should we tell my coach? And I was like, tell him I played for the University of Phoenix. So yeah, like the online. Yeah. And dude, yeah. he tells the coach, he's like, University of Phoenix. And the coach is like, Phoenix University. And I was like, yeah, whatever. Sure. Like, and the coach is like, what position did you play? And my, and my friend looks over at me like, what position and i was like uh safety that's the one in the back like i was like safety and he goes okay cool so we hang up my friend gets me loner gear it's so bad i'm wearing basketball shorts dude no pads on my legs shoes that are too big 
and a helmet that we stuffed with a shirt so that it would fit. This is the worst. And also, on the way to the game, I am YouTubing how to play safety because I don't know how <laughs> to play this game. So I'm like, this is this is fine. This is going to be fine. And I'm, I'm watching the video, and I find this one video. This is true. If you Google how to play safety, you'll find this video. And the dude's like, there's two kinds of safeties. One that reads the play. He knows what to do. He's there before the ball even knows it's going to go there. And there's the second type, the animal. And I was like, guess I'm the animal then. So <laughs> dude, I'm just like, I'm an animal. Cool. I get to the place. They're like, oh, you look scary. You look like a hardcore dude. You probably play football. I was like, yeah, definitely I play. They put me on special teams. It's the worst, dude. I have no idea what I'm doing. So I'm in. I'm playing safety, blah, blah, blah. We get to the second half of the game and, I, and everything's going fine. Then someone's like, they're the tight end, I think. And they're like, I got to sub out. I got to sub out. I hurt my foot. Come over here. And he has me be like the defensive end. That's what it was. Do you know anything about football? Nothing. Dude, defensive end is apparently a very large man position. I'm not that guy. So I get to the defensive end position. I'm like, all right, I just stand here. And he goes, yeah, stand here. Don't let the guy with the football by you and try and tackle him. And I was like, oh, okay. I look up and there's a 300 pound just beast of a man in front of me. And I'm like, great, cool. So I'm going to not go near him. They snap the ball. The guy comes around with the ball. I'm too fast for the big guy. And I'm like, I got to go for it. And I tackle the dude with the ball and or the quarterback and i'm like i made a play like the guy the announcers just like says because someone else's name is on my jersey oh my god they're just like they're just like uh sean makes a tackle and i was like dude i'm sean right now <laughs> yeah and i'm dude i'm fired i'm just like yeah i'm unstoppable like dancing and stuff dude and then the, now 300 pound dude is furious um they're about to snap the ball someone says the n-word and i was like what like what just happened and i was like did i say well like who said that and i look up and it's the guy and he's this 300 pound black dude and he's calling me he's just he's called me it and i was like what what and then they snap the ball he grabs my pads lifts me up in the air calls me it again and then body slams me on the ground so hard that my shoulder just goes nope we're going to go ahead and get out of here and dislocates completely uh. out of my arm. And that dude's just like, that's, that's what's up. And like, it's dancing over my <laughs> corpse, dude. And then he, to his credit, great football player, man, that guy killed it. He touched down, danced you. Yeah. He touched down, danced me. And then I, uh, he leaves and I'm just like, I got to get off this field. My shoulders out. I go, I'm like, someone put my shoulder in. Some dude in the crowd is like, I'm an EMT. And he's like drinking beer with a mullet. And I was like, I trust you. He cannot no. get my shoulder back in. He's like yanking my shoulder. And he's like, don't work. And so I just have Joe Dirt ripping on my out shoulder. It's even worse now. They take me to the hospital. I get to the hospital. Um, the doctors are like, we have to put you out. We're going to wrap a sheet around your body and we're two doctors are going to pull your arm back in. You have to be out for this. And I'm just like, all right. So the lady comes in to give me the medicine. And who is it? It's the lady whose bed I pooped. <laughs> I am jacked up on pain medication waiting to go out and the last thing i'm seeing is this lady and i'm like and and i don't remember anything but there's a video of me being like i dated you we dated and i'm like yelling at her and the people i'm with are like shane stop yelling at this lady and she's like i don't know you and i'm like <laughs> i dated you <laughs> did you have face tattoos back then uh yeah, so yeah. she didn't remember no she remembered she just she just was playing it cool and uh, she was not a fan of me and I just remember seeing her face and I was just like I'm gonna die and then I woke up and my shoulder was back and I never saw her again but I just remember her walking in and being like oh worst worst case scenario here you so you didn't move out of town cool cool cool, cool. oh my god yep and so that's that that full culmination so she she got me back she got to see me with my arm just like dude it was like in my chest it was so bad Dude, I have tears. I'm literally. <laughs> it was rough. The roughest. Oh, my so, God. So, uh, if just so everyone knows, football, that's a pretty hard sport. So, props to everyone who plays football. Oh, dude, major props to anyone. Yeah, yeah, who yeah. Football. Can't do it. And, uh, yeah, props to our uh, to medical staff everywhere. 
Dude, I just, I think I laughed the oh, fuck. I laughed so fucking hard in this last hour. Um, yo, man, thank you so much for doing this. Dude, thank you for inviting me. Oh, of course, anytime. Um, you want to tell everyone where to check your, your shit out? Yeah, so I have a podcast called Freaky Geeks. You can find it anywhere, Spotify, all the places. I'm Shay Dozer, S H A Y D O Z E R, on all social media. My special is Prison for Wizards. Go watch it. It's really good. Yeah, yeah. And then um, if you want to see me do comedy, you can follow me on social media and I'll say when I'm going to be places, but also drybarcomedy.com slash tour. Boom. That's it. Boom. Yeah. Thank you so much, man. Dude, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. It's ADHD.